Marvel, you didn't have to push the global release of your latest blockbuster just until I got back from Honeymoon. Huh? You didn't push back the global release date of your latest blockbuster just for me? You pushed it back in the UK because you were worried we'd all be too drunk from the World Cup to see the damn thing, and then again because you didn't want it to clash with Incredibles 2 Incredibles Harder UK release. Isn't it nice when all the subsidiaries of the owner of the entertainment world play nicely together? But I'm not annoyed because it came out in the UK a month after it was released in the US, and a month less a day after it leaked online. I just find that incredibly funny. I am annoyed that after setting up arguably the greatest storytelling idea in cinematic history of the world fleshed out by a decade of films and TV, suddenly plunged into chaos by the sudden and seemingly inexplicable removal of half its population, this film is set BEFORE Infinity War and dealing with the after effects of Civil War. Because why would you want to take advantage of a situation like that when you can have another Marvel film? Oh, and in case you were wondering, Ghost, portrayed by Hannah John Kamen from Killjoys, a show I feel I should enjoy a lot more than I do, is a really cool, effective, sympathetic character for the maybe 10 minutes she's allowed on screen. She's pushed to one side by the maybe 857 various characters, subplots, repetitive main plot points, and random comedy skits. Seriously, if I had a pound for every time someone said the phrase get or steal the lab, I'd be a millionaire. And as seems to be pretty much the case these days, all the best bits of the film, some of which could have been really cool popcorn moments, were in the trailer. And even when the film does remember that it's supposed to be about more than people dumping exposition or improvising for five minutes, we have several car chases which, whilst inventive at the film's use of scale, go on for far too long, and... Uh, setting a car chase in San Francisco? Are you sure you really want to do that, Marvel? Because you can throw all the CGI and expendable random goons in that you like, but you are going to come a very, very distant second to a certain 1968 cop film. Pat on the head for trying, though. And speaking of expendable goons and car chases, yes, it was very inventive the first time you shrank and then grew the car hero, or the suit malfunctioning, making Scott grow and shrink at random, but towards the end of the film, it was just getting a bit repetitive. There's nothing on the level of inventiveness in the fight scene like the fight scene at the end of the first movie, and there's a real sense of second verse, same as the first. Uh, so side note, I would love it if my autocorrect stopped saying I'm reviewing Batman and the Wasp because that's just annoying and I'm having enough trouble trying to remember this damn film as it is. Look, leaving aside the repetitive plot, padded runtime, wasted opportunity to explore the post-Infinity War MCU, overdone if vaguely exciting fight scenes, so-so car chases, and too many poorly fleshed out characters who I assume become lycra-clad fashion disasters in the comics, there is something to like about this film and it's the performances. Lang is motivated by his desire to be a responsible parent rather than anything bigger. A major plot point is his desperate desire not to be caught breaking house arrest and losing his daughter forever. Douglas and Lily are trying to save Michelle Pfeiffer from the quantum realm whilst being on the run from the FBI and a criminal after to their tech. After so many big save the world films, this is something of a palate cleanser, but the smaller focus means that it needs to be tighter, with several scenes, whilst funny in parts, needing a trim and a good 15 minutes could be removed to no great loss. A few more practical effects wouldn't hurt either. Look, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a fun distraction, but there's the creak of the production line about it. The main villain is underused, underdeveloped and deserving of more screen time, with side villains and characters getting way too much time even when they pose no real threat or even purpose to the central plot. At the end of the day, it's a Marvel film, and you know what you're getting into. It's one of the weaker entries, but it's by no means bad. It's just a forgettable little film designed to wash away Avengers Infinity War and get us ready for Avengers 4, Live Free, or Avenge Hard. So if nothing else is on, check it out. Otherwise, just don't bother. But what do you guys think, and what has been the weakest film in the MCU so far? Comment below, let me know. I'm Daniel, it's been a dunking. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.